prior to this relationship, you struggled with self love too. For sure. And self acceptance. I never, I've never said this. It's, just, it's so tough sometimes, like using words. Like, my girlfriend before Alana was my first time dating a white girl. I never dated a white girl. It's my first time. I was like, you know what? I'm not, there's, I'm not gonna put any fucking color on love. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And um, there was just a disconnect there. There was just a whole bunch in which that person couldn't control. But I also felt like I went into that one trying to be a truer version of myself. And that's why some of those things came out. But the truer version of yourself with that, your ex who was a white girl, didn't work. I don't think that I could have ever gotten to the maximum degree of my truth. Mm -hmm. Even though you are in relationships, you don't always feel seen in relationships. You be like, damn, I think we're just doing this. Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'm going to take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, lovers and friends. Uh, I'm going to hold you down, down to the end. I say, hi there, lovers and friends. Happy Thanksgiving. Something I should have said to you last week, but because we missed an episode, I didn't get a chance to tell you that. And I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, from my family to yours, I truly hope that you got rest that you had gratitude, and if that included a great meal, that that happened for you as well. Um, if that was a day of rebellion for you because of what the day stands for, I hope that you had a lovely rebellious day. Now, we missed last week unexpectedly, and I would love to blame it on the fact that it took us four days to travel back from Columbia to Los Angeles because of connecting flights and weather issues, etc. But the real truth is, I actually could have still salvaged it and finished the episode had I not gotten extremely high the day that we got home. I find that holidays are a great opportunity for heavy discussions. Some people like them because it's a time to party and get drunk. I like birthdays, I like Thanksgiving, I like anniversaries, because it's time to talk about our feelings. And there are a couple of feelings. I actually, am I getting lightheaded right now? I'm about to pass out. What's going on? Oh my God. And when you feel like it's not real. <clears throat> Woo! Now, if you know me, you know there's a story here because I don't get high and I don't even drink. But here's what happened. So after this long ass travel, we finally get back home and I have tons of packages because I've been away from home for a month. So I'm opening up my packages and one of those happened to be gummies. I get gummies pretty frequently, you know, whether they're to increase sex drive or some vitamin or supplement or something for postpartum, you know, gummies have become a part of the wellness world. And so these gummies, I don't know what they said they did, but I just know that I was craving something sweet and it was right in front of me. I do know it said microdosing on it. So I'm like, oh, it must have some form of CBD or something. And don't get me wrong. I acknowledge that CBD is cannabis. However, CBD is in many things that I get. They're in lubes that I have used before. It never really has an effect on my mood because it's like over the counter and it's, it's mailed to you. So what's the harm? So I just pop two of these seemingly innocent microdosing gummies into my mouth and went about my day trying to record the podcast as you saw. Initially I thought it was travel and then I'm like, maybe I'm dehydrated. And then I thought I had low blood pressure. Then I thought I was dying. And then all of a sudden it clicked and I was like, what about those gummies that you took? Were those actually all that micro? So um, <laughs> that's just a fun story. It actually kind of ties into the guest of this episode, Stilo Brim. Stilo Brim hosts a podcast called Wine and Weed in which they smoke weed and have a little drinky drink before and during episodes. I've been a guest in that podcast twice. I have never partaken in those extracurriculars. But again, after this experience, I get why their podcast is such a hit. So if you don't know, Sterling Brim, aka Stilo, is a comedian, podcast host, actor, TV host, producer, and a musician. You might recognize him from MTV's show Ridiculousness. He is the host of Wine and Weed, as I mentioned, and he also recently landed a deal with Paramount Plus and MTV Entertainment Studios, where he will develop, executive produce, and appear on camera. So obviously very excited to have him as a guest here on Lovers and Friends, the podcast. And through doing this episode, 
I was reminded of an earlier joy that I used to have. Years ago when I started my YouTube channel, I would do these sex talks and often I had straight heterosexual men as guests and they would surprisingly be my most favorite guests because I might have gone into the interview expecting them to have one kind of story and I was always blindsided with a much more fascinating truth. It was crazy because in my mind I thought like I could go forever. And then I, got, I went through this spurt where I was busting quick. Most men that you meet don't want a hand job. He said- Bring me all the hand jobs. <laughs> Other dudes don't want them, fine. Bring them to me. <laughs> I don't jizz from regular sex. It's very rare. I feel like I lusted strongly after her. I don't know about love. I've never loved anybody, but- You've never loved anybody? You've never loved anybody? Well, I mean, other, like my, other than like my mom and well, family. Yeah. I grew up watching a bunch of porn and I see how they rocking the shit and mine was nothing like that, so I mean, shit. Because I feel like anytime you tell somebody your, your truth or the things you've de dealt with, you try to, of course, gloss it up a little bit or else you look like a maniac. Most of us are fucking maniacs. When you, when you try to talk to people for real, you get to know a person, you be like, this nigga's crazy. <laughs> like, I know I'm crazy. And I'm like, yo, I've never had somebody be like, hey, I know you crazy too. But I'm willing to deal with your crazy and help you work on this crazy. I've always just had people be like, you crazy. And then you feel crazier. That last soundbite that you just heard was an excerpt from the interview with Steele O'Brien that we're about to get into. A conversation that, no, was not a sex talk, but definitely was a raw, vulnerable, bold, naked, exciting conversation that had tons of twists and turns that I genuinely believe that you will enjoy. The last time that I saw you, yeah, it felt like yesterday. Yeah. But if I assess how different my life is and your life is, it feels like a lifetime ago. I, yeah. You've moved homes. I have moved homes. Yeah. You're in love. Yeah. Both of our lives have drastically. And you're changed. a bonus dad too. I am a bonus dad. Yeah, yeah. The last time that I saw you too, you were. This could just be me having a, the wrong perception of you. Yeah. But I looked at you as like bachelor for life. Oh, did you? You know what it was? It was, first of all, you lived in the ultimate bachelor pad. Definitely lived the bachelor life. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That to be said, when I saw on Instagram, and I'm obviously late because you are in a three-year relationship. I just saw this post of you and your girl making out. You were on a beautiful vacation together. Yeah. And the caption was, get you some uncomfortable love. And yeah. so immediately I DM'd you and I was like, did. can I talk to you? <laughs> like, I want to know about this just because my perception of you was that this, you, this wasn't going to be your life. I guess, yeah, we started off just hanging out, like, which is apparently I'm out here doing partying and just hanging <laughs> out with people. So no, uh, yeah, we just, I had already met her years and years and years before that one time. She, uh, I guess, left an impression on me at least that I had remembered her and I had um, only seen her that was maybe like seven years prior. And then I saw her again a couple of times. I was like, I remember this girl. I don't know her name or it is, but I definitely remember this girl. And then I uh, started to see her a couple more times and I uh, had DM'd her actually. And she didn't respond. And then uh, <laughs> I DM'd her again because I knew she couldn't have seen it, <laughs> okay? And then um, <laughs> she didn't respond. And then, um, did you delete your old DM? No, I left them shits right there. Okay, good. Uh, to start at least. Uh, Somebody I, was telling me recently that they've been trying to get at Zendaya for years, mm -hmm. but they're like every month I DM her. Yeah. But then if the next time I go to DM, I delete the old DM. Yeah. So it looks like it's the first time. Of course, as you should, if you're doing this every month, which is <laughs> pretty aggressive. She has seen your post already. She is saying no. She's this is a strong no. I had DM her twice and then I wasn't going to DM her again. I hadn't seen her. Cool. She shows up at my birthday party, my my birthday party of all places. For me, you know what I'm saying? If I saw you at a random party, I probably wouldn't say shit to you. But this is my birthday party, the audacity. Because I know that you at least saw them DMs. Don't play with me. So I walk up to her. I say, yo, so you're going to really pull up to my birthday party? And you know you didn't you know, respond back to me with them DMs. She said, oh, my God, for you to even say that. And then she, <laughs> I said, look, look, I start talking to her in that moment. Let her know it's my birthday. I'm getting lit tonight. So probably not the best like night. Yeah, probably not the best night. It's my birthday. Okay, I can't. You're, you're for my guy. birthday, I can't party. That's crazy. I'm not even allowed to party anymore. I'm becoming a partier. Uh, <laughs> but no, I was like, yo, it's probably not the night for me to like really shoot my shot at you, seeing that I'm moving around. It's my birthday. But 
I would love to, you know. Oh, you said this? I, yeah, I would love to have an opportunity to just take you out some, get some coffee or some shit. She was like, definitely. I was like, I don't even drink coffee, but we could definitely go do that. She was like, cool. Or something close to it. She's like, you try again. And then I DM'd her the next day. And was like, now we'll try again. Let's start over. Did you shoot your shot like, this is, you know when you watch a movie and they're like, this is my girl? Or was it like, oh, this is a girl? No, I don't ever think like, this is my girl. That's not, that's just not how I'm wired. In the moment, I was like, yeah, I probably just want to kick it with her. I'm, I'm not newly single, but I'm single and I'm like, not necessarily looking for a relationship at the time. And then uh, we started kicking the same way that, she probably thought, oh, there's more here. I thought this he was a partier. I thought he was all this stuff. Um, I didn't know her. But, you know, I saw her at a couple of events that I, was, I deemed parties. And in, in, in my eyes, I was like, oh, maybe you a partier. Maybe you are this same type of girl that, you know, will allow me to just come in and we hang out on some smooth, just sex shit and keep it moving. And uh, she was more. She was more. And uh, she was trying to let me know that as well. Like, hey, Maxie Moore, you know. What the fuck you think this is? And I was like, all right, cool. And, and then uh, also has a child. That was a, a whole new thing for me. Being like, damn, you got a kid, fam. That's crazy. Because I never saw myself dating anyone with a child unless it was our child together. Um, but my whole thing also to her, because I'm a super family-oriented person, um, that, you know, I really believe in, in, in you know, you know, I, I'm a I'm a strong supporter of fucking being a great parent. Like yeah. if being present and being there um, when your child needs you. So that was one thing I also let her know. I was like, hey, if we are to kick it, I don't want to necessarily like. I'm not trying to jump in and be some father figure, but I don't like that if we spend a lot of time and I ain't seen your kid. Like where your kid at, fam? Mm -hmm. Like where your kid at? <laughs> and she was like, no, I gotta sit up this time of this. I was like, yeah, but like where your kid at? And she she's a great mom, so she was like, no. I'm cool with that. Just didn't know also how you would take to me if I wanted to bring my son around, whatever, whatever. I was like, you might as well bring him around. And then also for me, as I continue to to be with her and pour into her life and also his, you know, our relationship is so strong. So then it makes it where it's like, yeah, like if I didn't like her kid, oh, I tell her all the time, if your kid was shitty, it'd be easy, easy choice not to date you. You know what's so crazy about <laughs> listening to this story all in all, because it's just so much brutal honesty, because the reason we're here, we had a pre-call about yeah. what we're going to talk about. And you said, this is the first time that I've been myself in a relationship. Yeah. And there's nothing about you that says you have a problem being yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're the person who always just says exactly how you feel and who always puts it out there. Or was this something radical that you decided just before you met your partner, that you're like, I'm gonna start actually being true to me. Yeah, but for me, it was like, you know, you start dating a new chick, you might come in and lie a little bit and be like, nah, I'm this. You heard what? I cheated. People just say anything nowadays, don't they? Versus coming in and just being like, hey, this is exactly who I was. This is exactly who I feel like I am today. And it's exactly what I wanna be, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you're somebody that can help me with all of those things, which I think my girl like truly just amplified my life in the most positive ways. And a lot of those, like for me, I didn't have a lot of structure. My shit was just, I, I'm very get up and go, figure it out. It's time to go though, it's time to work. I know that much, but it's still structure in all of that. My girl's brought so much structure uh, um, to me that I just feel like, what the fuck was I doing in, in different, you know what I'm saying? Like in, in like different relationships, I felt like I was always trying to help better my partner. I never had anyone that was trying to necessarily help better me. Yeah, but they didn't know you either. Yeah, they didn't, I mean, they didn't, yeah, they didn't know me. They didn't know me. I definitely would say my last relationship definitely didn't know me like that. That wasn't her fault all the way. And then the relationship before that, we were just both young and we didn't know each other. We're both just like not real versions of ourselves. We we wanted something, um, but we, I think we were just young and wild, and I'm just like, nah, this ain't. There's no way that this could fucking be stable at any point. This is this is wild. This is craziness. But yeah, I learned a lot from that shit too. Cause when you were telling me about it, you were like, basically, prior to this relationship, you struggled with self love too. For sure. And self acceptance. So what I want to figure out is. Did you meet Alana and then decide from that point going forward you wanted to be authentic or you decided before you met her and this is the relationship that came as a result? Um, I th yeah, I think that I decided before. Uh, I think even in my relationship prior to me and Alana, I tried to be somewhat 
somewhat authentic. I think there was a, a disconnect um, with what I wanted and honestly who I really, I'm still every day searching, soul searching for myself, still searching each day to become, know exactly who I am, work on myself. You know, I, I feel confident in, in, in who I am, but still I think that, um, I never, I've never said this. It's just it's so tough sometimes, like using words. Like my girlfriend before Alana was my first time dating a white girl. I never dated a white girl. It's my first time. I was like, you know what? I'm not. There's. I'm not gonna put any fucking color on love. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I grew up in a very pro-black home, so this was like different for my family, for me, for everybody. It was like, okay, let's see what's up here. And um, there was just a disconnect there, just because I grew up in a very pro-black home. I grew up on the West Side of Chicago in the hood. Like there was just a whole bunch in which that person couldn't control. But I also felt like I went into that one trying to be a truer version of myself and that's why some of those things came out during that relationship where I was like oh shit this is really who I am this is how I really feel this is what you know I really want to represent me at the end of the day where I wanted to do this and I think coming into this relationship uh but the truer version of yourself with that your ex who was a white girl didn't work I don't think that I could have ever gotten to the maximum degree of my truth mm -hmm. You know, um, of my truth. And that's not to say to anybody else, but I don't think I would have got to the maximum degree of my truth uh, with a white girl. It was, yeah, it's just a lot. And just, and just in things I believe in and just pains and different things that, you know, hurt that I haven't necessarily, uh, that this country hasn't healed and that I haven't healed. It was just stuff that I was like, man, I don't want to put you through this shit. Saying I didn't do with you. This is me finding myself and felt, realizing that these things. I think coming into a relationship, yeah, you know, with my girl now, it was just more like, hey, I can be true about how I feel and everything and this and this and this, and I can be true about who I was and what I've done and this and this and this. And this person was accepting of me of that, and I was like, I ain't never had somebody just be like, I see you, fam, and I'm accepting of that. Because I feel like anytime you tell somebody your your truth or the things you that way, you try to, of course, gloss it up a little bit. Or else, you look like a maniac. Most of us are fucking maniacs. When you talk, when you start talking to people for real, you get to know a person. You be like, this nigga's crazy. I'm like, I know I'm crazy, and I'm like, yo, I've never had somebody be like, hey, I know you crazy too, but I'm willing to deal with your crazy and help you work on this crazy. I've always just had people be like, you crazy, and then you feel crazier. Well, you've made a career out of being crazy, but yeah. like, I guess it's like a brand of crazy. When you're yeah. mixing multiple strains it can feel chaotic. So then do you feel like you had curated a version of like your persona, which, cause like, you've always appeared to be free. You've always appeared to be confident. You've always appeared to be yourself. Mm -hmm. But what you're telling me is that those things being true is actually new. Isn't that not Hollywood? Is it not like people building facades and building different things? Yeah, and but then I think you get into a habit of doing that in relationships too, of feeling like, cause this is what the brand that people know of you, that when they meet you, you're like, I gotta carry and keep this shit up. For sure. So when you can get with someone where you could actually be authentic and share all of yourself and all the various versions of that, there's something like very freeing about that, but I would assume also very scary. Um. Yeah, it's something very scary. I think I think anything that I've in the last I guess three years since I've been with Alana, but um, even prior to, but anything that I've like tried to do, and in, in in those years of brand has been nothing but trying to if I can, if I can, if there's a window for it to monetize my truth and to not do anything that isn't my truth. That has like really been what the fuck I'm on. You said that it is hard for men to love themselves. What does that mean? Ugh, I told you it was a good conversation, but let's take a break for a moment to talk about life insurance. If you're listening to this Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance Sponsorship ad, there's a good chance that you're alive. And if you're not, well, this might not be of interest to you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Life insurance, I'm gonna live forever. Death is what happens to other people. And well, for the sake of argument, let's assume you're wrong and that someday you won't be listening to podcasts anymore. I know, it's not easy to talk about. So I'll do the talking. If you are 50 plus and alive or 50 to 75 in New York, you can apply for Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance with guaranteed acceptance regardless of your health. And since this life insurance is guaranteed, you don't have to have a medical exam. In fact, 
You don't even have to fill out a health questionnaire. For a free quote, just visit GerberLifeFamily.com. Then when you stop, I mean, if you stop listening to podcasts, your family can use the insurance money to help cover your final expenses or anything else. Look, your kids already inherited your ears, allergies, and questionable singing voice. Don't make them inherit your final expenses tab too. See website for terms and restrictions. You said that it is hard for men to love themselves. What does that mean? Just feel like women are told at a very uh, young age of like, hey, your body is your temple. You don't just give that to anybody. You matter. And like that is special. And it is. And I don't, I'm, I mean, maybe it was, maybe it's a disconnect in generations. Maybe it was when I was growing up. Uh, I don't feel like nobody pulling little niggas to the side and being like, hey, man, that dick of yours, you keep that to yourself. That is yeah. special. Okay? You tuck that in your pants and you never share it to a soul until you're ready, okay? I feel like growing up, it was damn near like, yo, smashing chicks or being around chicks is certain. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sport and it's a trophy, fam. You got it. You try and get the trophy. You ain't getting all the holes, though. How many numbers you get in there, fam? Like, at an early age, you feel these ways of like, oh. And then you grow up, you be like, damn, I wasn't self-loving. I wasn't out here really, you know, just loving on myself. I was out here giving my body and my soul to everybody. Like, that is insane. Like, the more you, like, you know, the more you just get in touch with yourself, the more you, you Why? start. Why? Huh? Why? I don't know. I, um, I feel like, for me, I try to to truly separate the two. I don't know if, I don't know if, um, if every person that I've had sex with, there's a soul tie. I know you hear that all the time. I don't know if I have a soul tie with everybody. Myself, I can only speak for myself. I didn't, I didn't, I don't need to be attached to everybody. You know, sometimes I go in, in rooms and I, I feel bad about my, myself being in rooms with, if it's, too many chicks in there that I'm like, man, I know all these chicks. I shouldn't know all these chicks. Even if I didn't smash all the chicks, I'm like, I shouldn't know all these chicks. And then I see yeah, smash a couple of these chicks. This feels like, uh, it feels uncomfortable on me. I feel like I'm the chick now. Society is flipping it on me now. I'm like, I'm a dirty little fucking cum guzzler. I shouldn't be in this room. <laughs> I'm like I, like, I don't know. But there's, it's just something about it that I feel like, why was I spreading myself so thin? Why was I giving so much of myself away to people who, might not necessarily even have been deserving, quote unquote. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And I just don't know if men necessarily grow up feeling that way. Or if maybe that's something that's just me growing up. Maybe that's just me finding more uh, um, peace within instead of seeking peace wherever else. Because I would think too, like yeah, as a dude, your worthiness or like what you, how much value you have could be qualified by your dick or your wallet. Yeah. Right? And like, if I got both, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But then I'm, I'm assuming what you're trying to say is that, like, as you get older, you realize that, like, that actually doesn't hit to me what makes me worthy. To me. To me. Because for me, like, I also know a whole bunch of dudes who forever, that is the game they choose to play. And we'll play forever. And I'm like, that's... A crazy game. That's kind of dope that you can live that game for. I don't know. I just don't. It's not me. I feel like I've done it. I've done it. And I'm like, damn, it, it still didn't give me any of any, uh, if it was completion I was looking for, nothing close to it, you know? So it's like, why continue to, I don't, I'm a, I'm a dude that, yeah, like you said, joking about a business savvy, but like I am a fucking businessman. I do believe that same thing about relationships. If I'm going to continue to invest in anything, I want a, some kind of return. Yeah. And I don't know if sex just with a random chick gives me that return. Uh, I don't know if it ever did. I probably thought it did just because you, you, you get those returns through people feeling a certain way or you hear you get those gratifications or that, those dopamines through girls telling you're good at it. So then you want to be like, yeah, I'm good at it. So let me, you know what I'm saying? Do more of that. Cause y'all, <laughs> I'm doing what y'all, yeah, y'all heard about. <laughs> I came in for this. <laughs> and then you were like, yo, but I'm getting nothing. Am I just doing a show? Yeah. This ain't for me. <laughs> well, let me ask the Oprah question then. <laughs> How did you redefine worthiness and how did that impact your ability to be in the kind of love that you are today? 
Um, ooh, that is an open question. Uh, <laughs> it is. So <laughs> how what? Did, how did you redefine self love? What do you love about you? That's kind of the the boiled down answer of it. If you're like, look, I get that the world wants me to look at myself in terms of how much I can spend and how many women I can fuck. Yeah. But that's not how I see myself, and that's not how I want to be seen. What did you switch the, the definition to? Uh, I just feel like just the truth. I feel like it was yeah. Again, it was well, just. I don't know your truth. As I'm asking what the truth is. Yeah, what my my you said my full truth. I mean, my truth is just again. It's my like being myself. Like I am a lunatic. I'm a fucking crazy person. Like if you can deal with me, I already think like you are also a crazy person. I don't know how you're dealing with me, but like for me, it's like being able to really, like you say, you seem so free. Being able to really uh, um, cross that that threshold of freedom and, and voice the things that matter to me, and to for someone to understand that, and and to, and to feel like okay, not only will I not call you. Uh, crazy Kanye, I'm gonna help you mold whatever this this crazy is. I wanna, you know what I'm saying? Like for me, it's just like living in those truths, being able to truly use my voice. And for for, for years, I feel like even being on the show that I was on, it's a very middle America white show. You know what I'm saying? Like you you might play a game just because you like yo. Those are our fans. It's our demo. I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna shit on our demo. Like I fuck with them, cool. I fuck with them, but some of their ideologies I might not fuck with. Some of the thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, for me, even in that same that same curve, just being able to tell my truth all in, and 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 that also be in love as well. If I'm a freak as well, if I'm like, yo, this is the shit I'm into, I know that if I could go to my girl with anything, not saying I do, but if I know if I did and was like, yo, shorty, this is what I want to try tonight, she'd be like, all right, mm-hmm. the fuck you want to do? Then let's figure that out, and vice versa. Just the same love I am, I'm like, okay, I've never done that, but okay, if you into that. But you know what's interesting? Because I'm thinking about in terms of how you described it for women. Because I do think that, especially in my generation, women were told, like, you're not your bodies. You have so much more to offer. Mm-hmm. Like, you are an incredible person. You are a whole being. And so then answering the question, like, what's lovable about you or what do you love about yourself might have come more naturally. Of Like, I want people to love me for my passion for the environment. Of I want course. people to love me for my heart. I want people to love me because I'm family oriented. Like, those would come to mind but for a dude you've probably never had to think about like yeah like what about me do i love and what do i want in turn for the people who love me to recognize and champion yeah i think i i probably saw all the things i wanted to be loved from for through my dad just looking at him just being like oh he's the same shit i don't know if i you know you necessarily realize it as a kid but you grow up and then you know it, it for me early on i realized like, i'm just like this name yeah <laughs> like it was me it was cool i, I wasn't tripping i was like cool i'm a, like for me it's like leaving behind any of that leaving behind like we just live forever you just you live forever it's just about if your updated version is gonna be better or not like i hope your updated version is better like if you if you implement those things if you're giving everything to your child you planting all those seeds then you know i hope that you know when stilo 2.0 comes out and not saying i need the same name or anything but when my child comes <laughs> out um that you just feel like man he better than you yeah <laughs> and i thought you were good but he's better than you. I think that's what we live for. I think that's the whole point of it. But, um, yeah, so I saw that shit through my dad. Like, this is what I want to be loved for, but I want to be a better version. Yeah. So to bring that back to your relationship with Alana now, do you feel like this is the first person who loves you for how you want to be loved? For sure. Like, the first time I felt, like, really seen and been like, all right, cool. Like, even though you are in relationships, you don't always feel seen in relationships. You be like, damn, I think we're just doing this. Yeah. I think this is some shit we just doing. <laughs> I think we doing it right. Uh, <laughs> it's not working, but you like <laughs> maybe we're not doing it right actually. <laughs> but like yeah, sometimes I think for my other two relationships, for definitely for a, a, a part of them for sure, I was like I think I'm just doing this, and that's not a feeling I want to have necessarily. Versus I'm building something and I'm moving towards something, and I feel like Alana definitely gives me that, and yeah, she definitely makes me feel seen and and, and love for all my little weird nuances and weird ways that she's like, all right, I still love you for whatever this is. You described your relationship as unconventional and you're like, this is the first time that I redefined the rules because your parents grew up, uh, your parents were traditional relationship, I guess, right? And yeah, you said that sure. you, your parents counsel people so that you heard a certain script about how relationships are supposed to go. But in this relationship, you threw that out the window and you guys wrote what worked for you 
Yeah, for sure. Which is, I think, which is the whole fucking point of doing a relationship. I mean, like, again, to take it back to business, like, I think it's just, um, I think it's an adjustable rate. I think it's just, I think that, you know, as a relationship goes, as we change each seven years, as, as, as things are constantly moving, I need somebody that's able to just adapt and, and, and be like, okay, well, this works for us for whatever reason this way. Like not, that's not how we're structured. I just think that we're more structured, like a real working relationship. I don't know if I ever had a real working relationship versus like, these are rules. We follow rules or the relationships not a relationship anymore versus like yo well if i'm feeling this way about this thing like we're not in a i definitely don't we've I hung out with a couple girls before in our relationship but that's not like i hate to even say that because it's not anything that's even based in our relationship but i think it's the easiest thing to say to to say okay this is different than my parents relationship yeah you know so what I'm you guys then identify as being monogamous yeah for sure like i'm not trying to cheat on her like i, I don't i think that Again, I said truth earlier. I'll go back to that. that so like, when you said that you have girls in the relationship, you more so mean like you guys partake together. Yeah. So there's no we have, outside I'm not even activities. trying to. I'm chilling. You're together. If you do open it up, it's you open it together. Together for a moment. Okay. I think I just feel free overall. I feel free uh, in, in my voice. I feel free in my morals. I feel free in... in, in um my future like dreaming like feel feel free to dream that's fucking important to have somebody that like you know you tell the craziest things to people sometimes they'll look at you and be like you crazy as fuck like mm -hmm. that's not gonna happen and you like okay you the wrong person people always say that bit of advice like get with somebody who accepts you 100 percent and I think that's a double-edged sword piece of advice because in some ways it's like find an enabler. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but on the flip side, it's kind of exactly what you're saying. Yeah. No, I don't think no, I don't think she enabled me. She definitely tries to hold me accountable. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, nah, she's definitely not because there's a balance there. One hundred percent. Because my my I know my one hundred percent. Even me knowing that, like, oh, I can live my truth. I still know that my truth. Or, or or I have ways about me that I gotta fucking get together. I'm I'm a constant work of art that I'm like, this ain't perfected just yet. Then I don't know if we'll ever reach perfection. Uh I think it's our our, our duty to strive for it at least. Uh but yeah, I, I think that well my girl is just yeah, she constantly knows, okay, this person's working themselves, but she's definitely there to let me know, hey, that's not okay. She makes me I think even just more aware of the small things too. Like I'm such a big picture person that I'll zoom past your ass getting the big picture sometimes. Not ever uh, step on anybody, but sometimes I'm just like, boom, like I'm I'm gone. I'm moving this way. I'm moving. I ain't even thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? And she is such a she's a nurturer, and so she's such a person that like notices the small things. She's the person that like will send my family anybody roses anybody passes away somehow they got roses for me they got flowers for me already i'm like i paid for this <laughs> my girl's like yeah i sent them flowers because i'm like oh shit like but it, it makes me stop which i should anyway it makes me stop and fucking be more aware of the big things or the small things that i should be paying attention to as well like she makes me yeah she just made me better and shit there was something that I said when I first got together with my <laughs> husband and I was like, this is, it seemed like a fucked up thing to say because of all that we've been taught about self-love. Mm -hmm. Like you got to love yourself first. You got to love yourself fully. And that shouldn't be contingent on anybody else. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, the craziest thing though is a good love makes you love yourself more. Yeah. Do you relate to that? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I was going through probably like a whole bunch of different things through through business, through, and, and I feel like, you know, I don't, yeah, I hate to, because that makes it sound like it's some weird trauma bond and some shit, but I feel like my girl was just there in ways that I was like, yeah, I found more love for self through her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just adore you, friend. And if you also enjoyed this conversation with Stilo, you are definitely going to like Wine and Weed, the podcast that he hosts along with one of his besties, Chris. It is funny, it is informative, it is all the things that you would expect a podcast with two high comedic friends to be. 
I've been a guest on it twice. So go and find those episodes and then go to the library. It's a lot of fun. And also a lot of fun is to follow along with Stilo on Instagram and his other social accounts because that's how you see all the cool things that he's up to and putting out there in the world. And all of this information can be found in the show notes for quick access to Stilo's world. Also, the show notes is a great place to go to get quick access to the rate and review section of the podcast. And this is the part where I lecture people to go and do that. But I also have got to grind a gear right now with the YouTube community who is new to Lovers and Friends. Before this was an audio only podcast, we now have video also on YouTube. And the YouTube community has been getting on my last nerves. I want to talk about it. But before that, let's have a woosa moment. And also, this is a great opportunity for me to tell you about the last sponsor of this episode, last but not least, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a service that matches you with a licensed professional therapist or counselor that helps you to navigate through the various landmines and valleys and peaks of life. And BetterHelp is a great option for people who are looking for Therapy that is accessible, that is affordable, and that is customizable. And I have been a customer of BetterHelp. I have benefited from it, especially while I was pregnant. And if you were at a place where you feel like you could use an extra hand, an extra ear, extra tools to navigate life better with, then this is for you. Listen up. So BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to match you with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking with that therapist, you can easily change at any point. I changed therapists twice through BetterHelp before I found somebody who I felt was very helpful for me. It just couldn't be simpler. So to learn more and to save more, all you have to do is go to betterhelp.com lovers. That's better H-E-L-P.com slash lovers. And that way you're going to save 10% off your first month with better help. Once again, because I want to make sure you heard that better help.com slash lovers for 10% off your first month with better help. And now onto the YouTube community. <sighs> One of the reasons that I really enjoyed this podcast being audio only is that the conversation between us tends to be a lot more thoughtful. Instead of just scrolling down to the comments and just writing things as you're listening, you have to pause, stop, look for the rate and review section, and then type out something mindful that is not just a knee-jerk response to something that you saw at minute 13. It's a thoughtful response to how you feel about the whole episode or the whole podcast at large. And I felt like that that dialogue was a lot more helpful in me making and shaping this into a podcast that I love and that I have a community that I also feel like an equal amount of love towards. The YouTube culture tends to be a lot more reactive and responsive. And I just want to say, reading between my lines, editorializing my vulnerability is not what I hope for when I put out personal episodes like the last one I did with my husband, Jared Brady. And while most people engaged very responsibly with this content and shared very personal messages or very encouraging messages or shared their own stories, there were definitely some people who felt the need to spin fan fiction um, and just spew misinformation about my relationship or twist my words or Jared words in ways that aren't necessary because we're giving it to you very straight, uncharacteristically, very boldly straight, very bravely straight as is. So I just always think it's so cheap when people take your honesty and try to squeeze something vile out of it. Not necessary, not cool, not appreciated. What is appreciated though, are all the people who took the time to go and rate and review the podcast. I love the comments, don't get me wrong. The conversation that you get to have on YouTube is bar none. It is 50% of why people choose this platform, not just to hear what I have to say, but to see how people engage with it. And I actually did read on that particular episode, a lot of people really loving the comment section for the reasons I mentioned before. There were great stories and life lessons and nuggets and truth and words of encouragement in there. But obviously as the person who was putting themselves out there, I am going to be sensitive to the negativity and that's what I'm commenting on. But I do separate the two and understand that it's not all bad. There's definitely a lot of beauty in there. 
Anyways, moving on. Another beautiful thing that you can do aside from commenting is rating and reviewing the podcast because this act is bar none the strongest thing you can do as a listener to support a podcast because this is the space where advertisers go and also potential guests go to see if there is an activated community. I go there all the time to get feedback and I'm really grateful to Joni, to Pharaoh, to Jessica Joyce, to Pearls, to Miu, to Jazzy Ice, to May, to E.B. Waller, and as well to Daryl Walke um, for all recently rating and reviewing the podcast. Whether you give it one star or five, that act is an act of love, and I deeply love and appreciate you for that. That's all. I'm definitely going to be loving next week because we're going to be back to a more normal flow. I've got a lot more time with the episode. I am finally off of East Coast time and back fully here on West Coast time and tuned in with you. And thank you for tuning in to Lovers and Friends, a podcast. We'll chat next week. Bye. Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'm going to take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, lovers and friends. Uh, I'm going to hold you down, down to the end. I say, Lovers and Friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment's Shan Boudram. It is produced by Boudram and Crazia Cruz with production support from 2S Entertainment's Adam Krasner, Isabel Gallant, and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and performed by Jared Brady, who also does the scoring and engineering on our episodes. Lovers and Friends is powered by Audio Boom and made possible by our incredible sponsors, who you can show love to by reading our show notes.